So, we will start with a quick recap of probability theory. The assignment is also designed to kind of uh, make you just go back and read about these things which you would have done at some point in your life. Uh, and I will just quickly go over the first module or the zeroth module which is a recap of probability theory. That is why I said embarrassingly back right. So, axioms of probability. So, for any event we know that probability of the event should be greater than or equal to 0. And if you have the universal set which contains all the events in your uh, uh, all the events then the probability of the universal set is going to be 1. This is the basic axioms of probability. Now, random variables. So, so here is the intuition behind random variables right. Suppose a student can get one of three possible grades which is A, B, C. One way of looking at it is that of all the possible events there are these three events that a student gets a grade A or the student gets a grade B and the student gets a grade C and there would be students in each of these events and you are trying to find the probability of this event right. The other way of looking at it is that you have this set of students and you have a random variable which unfortunately is not a variable it is a function actually which maps each of these students from your set to a particular value right. So, that is what a random variable is a random variable is actually a function which maps your outcomes to your uh, values right. So, from for each of these students we have a function which connects them to one of these three possible grades. So, that is another way of looking at it. So, one way was to think of these grades themselves as event. The other way is to think that you have a set which has a lot of outcomes and for each of these elements of the set you can map them to some uh, value which is a grade ok. So, we will see why this is the more be better way of doing it. So, irrespective of the first view or the second view everything remains the same. The answers that you are going to get if I ask you what is the probability of the grade being a certain value right grade being A or B or C whether you take the first view or the second view the answer is going to remain the same right that does not matter. But why do we focus on random variables rather than the first view is that you might be interested in several things about a student right. You might be interested in what are the heights of different students how many of them are short how many of them are tall and so on how many are adults young and so on right. There are various things about a student that you could add each of these random variables actually operates on the same set and maps them to different values right. So, this view is more modular or more reusable in that sense right. You have this set of possible outcomes and for each of them you are trying to map them to certain values and these values could be different. They could be grades, height, age, what not right everything could be possible right. So, you could have a random variable for each of these quantities that you are interested in. And then you could ask questions right give me all the outcomes for which the grade is a certain value, the height is a certain value and the age is a certain value right. So, the more formal definition is a random variable is a function which maps each outcome in your universal set to a value right. And the previous example the f grade which is in shorthand represented as the random variable capital G is the random variable or the function which maps each student to one of these three possible grades A, B and C right. So, remember random variable is a function it is not a variable I do not know why it is called a variable, but it is called a variable ok. And then you could have a random variable which maps it to ages and a random variable which maps it to heights and so on right. And the event grade is equal to A is actually a shorthand for the following event give me all those outcomes from my universal set for which when I apply the function to this uh, outcomes the answer should be grade A right. So, when I say I want the probability of grade equal to A this is what I actually mean or if I ask for the set grade equal to A this is the set that I am looking at everyone is fine with this ok. So, all of you should be comfortable with this definition of random variable this is not my definition just the generic definition that is there ok. Now, a random variable can either be continuous or discrete right. So, discrete is the example of grades where you have grades A, B, C, D and so on. What is a continuous random variable? Height, weight and so on right which can take on any real value it is not discrete ok. For this discussion and for the rest of the discussion on this remaining 30 percent of the course we will be focusing only on discrete random variables unless otherwise mentioned I do not think I will ever look at continuous random variables we will only focus on discrete random variables right ok. 
So now that's what a random variable is. Now that we understand random variables, we can talk about different things related to that random variables. The first thing that we can talk about is marginal distribution. So what do we mean by a marginal distribution of a random variable? So if I ask you, give me a distribution for the grade, the random variable grade, what will you actually give me? What does a marginal distribution in the discrete case actually mean? If I ask you the marginal distribution of a random variable, what do you need to actually give me? Probability of each setting of the random variable, right? So for if the random variable can take values A, B, C, suppose the grade can take values A, B, C, then you need to give me the table that you see on the uh, whatever side it is, the table, right? The only table which is there, uh, okay? And we denote this marginal distribution compactly as P of G. So when I say P of G, I actually mean this entire vector or this entire table, which is P of G is equal to A, P of G is equal to B, and P of G is equal to C, and so on. Right? That's what a marginal distribution is, specifying all the values that the random variable can take, probability for all the values that a random variable can take. I know this is very elementary, but this is very important for understanding how many number of parameters do you need to learn in a particular joint distribution or marginal distribution and so on, right? Now what's a joint distribution? Suppose in addition to grade, which can take on values A, B, C, you also have this another random variable intelligence, which unfortunately can take only two values in our world, which is high or low, okay? What is a joint distribution of over grade and intelligence? It's specifying every, it's specifying a probability for every combination of the grade and, so you have this cross product, there are three possible values for grades and two possible values for intelligence. For each of these six values, you are going to specify a probability value, right? So this table that you see is the joint distribution, right? So remember that we are always used to saying that joint distribution is P of G comma I, right? But that means that you have P of G comma I for every value of G and every value of I. That's what you need to specify. Now again, I am repeating this because when I ask you to give me a joint distribution or learn joint distribution from a data, from a given set of training data, this table is what I expect. I expect you to give me values for all possible combinations of the input variables or the input random variables. Right? That's why this is important. Okay. Now what's a conditional distribution? So if I ask you, this is what we typically write, right? I want P of G given I. What does that mean? How many values do I need to give you? And again, assume that G can take three values and I can take two values, right? So if I ask you that give me this conditional distribution, how many values do I need to give you? Six values. It's the same as the joint distribution. What will I have to give you? So I'll have to give you these tables. I'll assume that I is equal to high. Given that I is equal to high, what are the different properties for P of G equal to A, B, and C? And the other table is given I equal to low, what are the probabilities for A, G equal to A, B, and C, right? Okay? So, and there's some other simple stuff that this is how you write the conditional distribution is the joint distribution over the marginal distribution, right? So this equation actually connects all the things that we have seen so far. The joint distribution is the conditional distribution into the marginal distribution. Is that fine? Okay? Fine. So you should be comfortable with if I ask you give me a joint distribution, if I tell you how many values my random variables can tell you, uh, can take, you should be able to tell me how many parameters I'll need to specify that distribution, right? That's what this uh, basic material is meant to uh, stimulate you to do, okay? Fine. Now what's the joint distribution of n random variables? The table on the next time step. The table never on the first, in all cases, the table should never be on the first time. What's the joint distribution for n random variables? How many values do I need to give you? If each of these random variables can take k values, how many values will the joint distribution have? k power n, right? So for, and that's, you're used to this because you have done a lot of logic, right? Where you assume Boolean variables and for all combinations you try to write down some truth table and so on, right? So it's very similar to that. So in other words, it assigns P of X1 equal to X1, X2 equal to X2 for all possible values that the variable Xi can take, okay? And if each random variable can take two values, you'll have two raised to N entries in the joint distribution, okay? 
and the other thing is just as for two random variables you could write the joint distribution as a product of a conditional and a marginal. How do you write the joint distribution of n random variables? So, I am going to start using some terminology because joint distribution of two random variables factorizes as a conditional distribution and a marginal distribution. What about the joint distribution of n random variables? What is the one rule which has stayed with us so far and will continue to go into will continue to chain rule right. So, again we will have the chain rule here. So, we have you can assume that all of these variables are clubbed together. So, given x 1 and then probability of x 1 that is the same as this form right and then just keep doing this recursively till you get the following right. The ith variable depends on all the i minus 1 variables before that and you will have a product of these is that fine this is known as the chain rule and you can clearly see that this is just a spatial case of this formula right. So, just be very comfortable with the chain rule this is going to be very important when you are talking about various things right Di directed graphical models or undirected graphical models or what not right. So, it is very essential that you completely understand the chain rule and maybe I will get back to it later ok. So, now from joint distributions to marginal distribution suppose I am given the joint distribution over two random variables a and b ok. So, the first table that you see here what kind of a distribution is it joint conditional marginal joint distribution. Now, from here I want to find a conditional distribution for a and b what does that actually mean what am I given and what am I asking for p of a p of b. So, how do I get the marginal distribution from the joint distribution sum over what ok fine. So, now first of all if I have to give you the marginal distribution of a how many values do I need to give you two values and I am assuming that all my random variables are binary so two values. So, from the joint distribution how will I get these two values I will sum up which two rows I will keep the value of a same and sum over the b values and same for the other guy right. This is again straightforward all of you know that, but just be comfortable with this that you can obtain the marginal distribution from the joint distribution by summing over the variables which are not of interest right. So, when you want p of a you will sum over the b's when you want p of b you will sum over the a's ok. So, this is and in general now if I give you a joint distribution of ok this is more compactly right. So, this is like for all possible values that b can take you are going to sum this but compactly this is how we write right. We always ignore the value assignment and we just talk about p of a comma b ok. Now, from here if you are given n random variables how are you going to find the marginal distribution from this joint distribution sum over all other variables right. So, do you see a problem with this summation you do see a problem with this summation right. There is a problem with the basic joint distribution itself we will come back to it, but we will focus on these things. But if you just kind of vaguely appreciate at this point it is fine we will come back to it in a few more slides ok. So, even if you are given n random variables in a joint distribution you can get the marginal distribution for each of these n random variables by summing over all those other variables that you do not care about ok fine. And again this is more compactly written as this what is conditional independence when do I say that a variable x is independent of the variable y in terms of probability what is the equation that you write p of x given y is equal to p of x knowing the value of y does not change your belief about x that is the English way of saying it right. And we denote this as x independent of y so just uh, this is a standard uh, notation again. And we would expect the grade to be dependent on intelligence, but perhaps not dependent on weight or height or something like that right I mean this is probably not any connection and recall that by the chain rule for two variables we have p of x comma y is equal to p of x into p of y given x. So, what will this simplify to? So, combination of the chain rule and the independence definition gives you this form for the joint distribution of two variables if the variables are independent ok fine. So, that is all the basic stuff from probability that we need I would encourage you to go back and just be comfortable with all of this and with this we can now start discussing about directed graphical models.